inner outer key is found under the keying category, and this is a very unique hands-on approach to color keying. And it requires you to actually mask out the subject that you want to key. If your subject is a person walking around and throwing his arms around like Shia is here, honestly, this probably is not the right keying tool for you. At this point in After Effects, key light is much more robust and more effective at keying out green screens. But if you're shooting an object like a tennis ball or something that's rigid on top of a green screen, or maybe something that's not moving all that much but has a lot of detail, inner outer key can do some things that other keying tools can't. First, I'll apply the effect to the footage. And look at the controls. We have a foreground or the inside mask, background or outside mask, as well as additional foreground and additional background. We'll get to that in a little bit. And then controls for cleaning up the mat. So like I said, we're going to have to draw some masks on top of our subject. You can do this with one mask or two masks. If you're only going to do one mask, then you just need to draw a rough mask around your subject. So I'm gonna just pan around here and quickly draw a garbage mat or a mat that isn't perfectly aligned, it's just roughly outlining the shape of the subject. I'll try to stay consistent with how far away this mask is from Shia. And I'll go ahead and cut out in between his legs as well. And I don't actually want this to mask my layer, so I'm gonna change the mask mode from add to none. Then I'll choose that mask as my foreground or inside mask. Now my background is transparent and I have this really strange chattery edge around Shia. Now I didn't do all that good of a job of maintaining the same distance from the subject throughout the entire shape. So I'm gonna move this around a little bit and just make everything a little bit closer to the actual edge of the subject. And what it's attempting to do is distinguish between the foreground object and the background screen, regardless of what color it is. So again, I'm just moving all this a little more close to be more accurate to defining the actual edge of my subject. And with that a little bit closer, you can see that that edge is now being chipped away a little bit more accurately around his hair and his entire silhouette. And I might even need to add in a few more points here. But now that I have something that's a little bit closer, I can refine this edge a bit more. First of all, we have single mask highlight. If I increase this, you can kind of think of this like a radius for how far beyond that mask it's looking to key out and find that silhouette. So as I turn that up, more of that green goes away. And again, I'm probably gonna need to add a few more points in here to really sharpen up that edge and clean up any of this chatter that's happening. But it's doing a pretty good job of finding that key and making it transparent. Now, obviously I could do a little bit more work to get this a little more perfect, but that's the basics of what this effect does. It looks at the mask that you draw and then attempts to knock out that background color. The problem is this is not automated in any sense. If I click and drag forward in time, Shy is gonna move away from that mask and it's going to be completely pointless. It only works on the frame that I drew it on. So I'm going to have to keyframe this mask manually, basically rotoscoping my clip with a little bit more room for error, and the effect will take care of that green edge. And that's why I say that a moving organic subject like a human is likely not the best technique for this type of keying, unless every other technique you use isn't working and you're willing to put in the time and effort it takes to kind of rotoscope your subject. But let's pretend that I'm fine with using this technique. I can also distinguish between the foreground and background using two different masks. If you only use one mask, then you would set that as the foreground. But let's say that I want this to be my background mask. So I'm gonna turn this off, set this to mask one for my background mask. And then I'm gonna zoom in nice and close. And what I'll do is draw another mask similar to the one I've already drawn just to keep it consistent. And this time I'll be on the inside edge of my subject. So instead of going on the outside, I'm going on the inside. Now this technique is best suited for objects that don't have clear defined edges. Most of Shia is nice and clean, but if you think of things like hair or other objects that don't have a clean, hard defined edge, this could be a good option for cleaning up that key. You can kind of think of this effect like the refine edge tool with the roto brush if you're familiar with that. But there we go, I've defined my second mask. I'm again going to set it to none and I'll call this inner and the first one outer and then choose the inner mask as my foreground mask. That made quite a difference in the key. If I duplicate this effect and turn off that instance and I'll just set the outer mask as my foreground, I'll take a snapshot and then turn this effect off and this one back on and then show the difference between the two. 
So we have less artifacts around the edges here. It's having an easier time distinguishing between the subject and the background. But we still have this issue here of this green part between his arm and his body. I'm going to delete this instance of inner outer key and I can fix this by drawing another mask. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to draw a garbage mask around this hole. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer you are, the more accurate it will be. And then I'll change that again to none and choose that as a foreground to mask. And that will remove that hole for you. So that's a good way to deal with holes, or you could also use it as a way to add more subjects into your key if you had multiple subjects on the same shot. And the same thing goes for background masks. So that's how the masking controls work in this effect. Now the masks that I've drawn are doing a pretty decent job. There's really nothing else that needs to be cleaned up here, but clean up foreground and clean up background have lots of different mask options that allow you to clean up your image even further. So if you had other areas that needed to have more precise detail, you could draw another mask, choose it in the cleanup foreground or background section, and then even adjust brush radius and brush pressure settings to modify it. Like I said, mine doesn't really need that, so I'm not going to bother, but those controls are there. Finally, we have edge thin, feather, and threshold, and these are controls for modifying the look of your alpha mat. And I'm gonna just disable my mask visibility by clicking on this button right here, and then increase or decrease this edge thin. This is basically a simple choker. Now, if I really pull this back, you'll notice that this is not what was behind the effect. If I turn those effects off, it's actually pulling colors from the edge of my subject and filling it in and expanding it, generating a matte that's going to be much cleaner than if I were to just use a simple color key effect. If I turn this one off and just bring out the obsolete color key effect and just choose this green and then maybe increase the tolerance, you'll notice that I have a lot of this green harsh edge around the outside. I could feather that out and I can bring it in a little bit but there's clearly still this green halo around his silhouette. That's not the case with inner outer key. It's actually using color information from the silhouette to fill in that outer edge. And like I said, this is very similar to how the refine edge tool works with the roto brush. It just exists in this keying effect form. I could also feather out that alpha mat if I want it to be a little bit softer, and I can turn up or down the edge threshold. And that's a good way of removing stray pixels if you have anything hovering or chattering around the outside of your mat. I could also invert the extraction to give me the background and not the subject. And then finally we have blend with original which is just an opacity slider for the effect. That's really it for inner outer key. Like I said, it's more of a hands-on approach to keying out a subject, but it's, I think, a pretty happy medium between color keying and actually rotoscoping. And with the additional controls you get for cleaning up the edge and how it automatically pulls colors from the edge of the subject into that expanded mat, it's definitely an effect worth knowing about. But that's all you need to know about inner outer key. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.